Okay, the difference between epithelial and connective tissue membranes, mucous and serous membranes, um, visceral and parietal membranes, cutaneous membranes, synovial membranes. Why the hell didn't I watch that Penguin Prof video? Oh my gosh, it was just a bad dream. You're here. Hi, I'm the Penguin Prof. Please show me some love if you find this video helpful. Yeah, we're going to tackle this today. We're going to be talking about tissue membranes of the body, and we're actually going to start with what are tissue membranes anyway? Tissue membranes refer to a thin layer or sheet of cells that covers something. Okay, the things that we can cover include the outside of the body, the skin, organs like the heart. A covering of the heart would be the pericardium. Internal tubes that open to the outside of the body, like the lining of the GI tract and the lining of movable joint cavities. So this is an overview of the tissue membranes that we're going to be talking about. We classify epithelial membranes as those that contain both epithelial and connective tissue. And connective tissue membranes don't have the epithelia. They only contain connective tissues. So get ready. There are four types altogether. We're going to start with the cutaneous membranes. When you hear the term cutaneous membrane, we are talking about the skin. It's considered an epithelial membrane because it contains epithelia, as you can see here the epidermis and connective tissue that lies beneath. When you explode out that epidermis, you can see here, this is stratified squamous epithelia. This is a really protective surface and it protects us against pathogens, UV light, temperature changes, etc. Next, we have mucous membranes. Mucous membranes line cavities that are open to the outside of the body. We're talking digestive, respiratory, excretory, and the reproductive tracts. As the name implies, they produce mucus to protect and lubricate surfaces. You should really stop and think about mucus. Mucus is life's lubricant, and without it, none of us would be here. Here's an example of a mucous membrane, and you can see the magic here, the goblet cell that produces the mucus in this simple columnar epithelia lining the small intestine. Next, we have serous membranes. Serous membranes line cavities and structures that are not open to the outside, and they occur in pairs. One membrane lines the organ itself, and one membrane lines the cavity that the organ sits in. Between the two, you will find serous fluid. So let's look at the heart. This is, of course, not an anatomical heart, but a hallmark heart. This is the cavity the heart sits in. So lining the surface of the heart itself, you will find the visceral membrane. Lining the cavity that the heart sits in, you will find the parietal membrane. Between the two, you will find find serous fluid. The serous fluid protects the heart from rubbing up against the sides of the cavity every time it beats. OpenStax has a great analogy here. It's like if you were to take your fist into an air-filled balloon. Now, of course, we're looking at the anatomical heart. Hallmark would never make a card like this. But you can see the visceral pericardium lining the heart itself, the parietal pericardium lining the cavity the heart sits in, and the pericardial cavity, which contains serous fluid to prevent any rubbing or friction. Finally, we have synovial membranes. Synovial membranes refer to the membranes that line movable joint cavities. Synovia means thick fluid. It's kind of slimy. It provides lubrication, reduces friction, and also nourishes the cells in the articular cartilage because they do not have their own blood supply. All right. Now you can do a self quiz. You should be able to stop this video and fill out this table. And you should be able to fill in the blanks for these statements. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching the Penguin Prof channel. Show me some love. Slam those buttons below. I'll see you in the next one. Good luck.